Good evening, guys. Uh, good evening, good evening. Uh, Mr. Sanchez, great to see you. Dinora, how are you? Uh, gracias, Mauricio. Y espero good que evening, teacher. Feel better. Good evening, guys. Salvador, good evening. Great to see you. Abigail, how you doing, miss? How are you? How was your day? How was your Thursday, guys? So bien, everything good? Well, guys, espero que tuvieran un buen día. I really hope you had a nice day, like a really, really good day. Gracias por acompañarnos in session number 18, right? Uh, lady, good evening. Great to see you. Gracias por acompañarnos as well. Juanjo, good evening. Thank you for joining. Good evening. Good evening, good evening. And I think, oh, Andrea, good evening. Great to see you, Andrea. Gracias por acompañarnos as well. So, guys, uh, really nice to have you around. Eh, gracias por hacer el tiempito, right? Enjoying today's class. Eh, vamos a, a intentar eh, avanzar con parte de las sesiones que tenemos pendiente. And guys, eh, today we start kind of a new topic. Vamos a dejar un poquito la parte de los models, eh, de recomendaciones, con should, eh, con could, right? And, ah, okay, okay. Thank you, Mr. Sanchez. Okay. Espero que le abunde y termine rápido. <laughs> I hope you finish fast. So, uh, vamos a, uh, de hecho, a trabajar un poquito el día de ahora ya con condicionales. So, we're going to work a little bit there. And uh, let me just a second. Allow me just a second here. And to get us started, guys, I have just a little bit of something. So to get started, tengo un ejercicio, I have a little exercise. This is a matching exercise, guys. And uh, wait, permítanme. Wait a second. No sé por qué. Oh, acá está. Sorry. It was, it was smooth. All right. Eh, antes de completar el ejercicio, guys, vamos a revisar un poquito de vocabulario, right? Let's go really quick and check some vocabulary. So, tenemos un par de expresiones, algunas son nuevas, otras I'm sure that you know them. Kenya, good evening. Uh, thank you so much for joining. And uh, Miss Mendoza, good evening as well. All right, guys, so take a look here. Um, we have the first word that is breath. Uh, what's the meaning of breath, guys? ¿Qué recuerdan que es breath? <clears throat> What's the meaning of that word? Gracias, Abigail. Espero que llegue sound and safe. So, Respirar. Aliento. Eh, ok. De hecho, ambos están correctos. Que es, puede ser aliento, pero también puede ser respirar. Solo que respirar le vamos a agregar una letra más. We're going to add... An extra letter, la voy a escribir acá con una, uh, like a small one. Entonces, se convierte en breath, right? So, breath, solo breath. Um, es el aliento, right? Como un suspiro, también podría ser. And breathe, cuando ya lleva la I, ese respira, right? Uh, like when you say, oh, she's breathing, or breathe, right? So, respirar o aliento. Eh, search. Guys, what is the meaning of search? Buscar. Buscar. Eh, Very nice. Yes. Okay. Definitivamente, we can use it eh, for that. So, sí, puede ser buscar en internet o buscar algo, right? Como cuando buscamos un empleo. How do you say, oh, tengo que buscar un empleo? So, we call it search for a job, right? Or a job search. So it's mm, como no yeah, look for. Look for a job, search for a job. Mm -hmm. Ambas se pueden. Both are acceptable. All right. What about next one, guys? We have grow. What's the meaning of grow? Crecer. Mm -hmm. ah, very nice. Yes. So crecer, but también cuando hablamos de plantas, when we're talking about plants, flowers, um, animals, 
y hablamos del proceso como de cuidarlas, you know, like gardeners, que es lo que los jardineros hacen, gardeners, farmers, they grow plants. Eh, si alguien cultiva, for example, so they grow plants. También es el proceso, you know, de ayudar en el crecimiento as well. So crecer or um, the person who helps in the process, right? Um, next word we have is doubt. What about doubt? Duda. Very good. Okay, yes, so that's duda or dudar, right? So both. Eh, alive. Vivo. Very nice, Adjective. Abigail. Okay. I'm glad. I'm really glad. Exactly. So alive is the opposite of the uh, dead, right? Mm -hmm. So we have doubt. We have uh, um, alive. Eh, be careful in Espanol. In a pastilla, there is a pill that we call it alive, I guess. But it's alive. That's the word we use. Uh, show up. ¿Alguna vez han visto esa palabra? Have you seen it? Como mostrar o aparecer. Mostra. Fíjense que cambia. ¿Se recuerdan que vimos phrasal verbs? Que un verbo cambia eh, cuando se le agrega algo más, como un, par, un pedacito más. So, esto es un claro ejemplo que el verbo ya cambió. Eh, show sí es mostrar, pero con show up cambia totalmente. It changes the meaning. Aparecer. Aparecer. Ok. Pero, ¿en qué sentido? Uh, not in the sense que vi un fantasma, right? <laughs> y apareció un fantasma. No. Uh, we're going to use show up para decir que una persona apareció. Like, for example, uh, look at this example, right? Uh, es una entrevista and you can say, oh, they show up to the meeting. So ellos asistieron. La idea de show up es asistir o presentarse a un lugar, right? Uh, like in a party. Si nadie lo espera, and suddenly you just show up, it's like, hey, he came, or she came, right? Show up is aparecer, pero de ir a un lugar o presentarse a un lugar. Just for you to have like an idea there, eh, cambia un poquito de show. Um, de hecho, cuando decimos, él llegó, um, we don't say he went, he arrived, but he, we usually say he show up, right? Para que lo vayan agregando a su bolsita de vocabulario. And guys, eh, remember, arrive, go, eso es inglés básico. Vamos a intentar agregarle más vocabulario para dar el saltito al intermedio, right? So lo hacemos con este tipo de palabras. Next one we have is warning. Uh, creo que ya la vimos antes. What's the meaning of warning? Mm, advertencia. Okay. Precaución. Yes, advertencia, precaución. And in companies, ayer nos decían algunos compañeros, Um, we can also use like uh, como una AP, como una acción de personal, right? Como like a previous word, we um, like we tell somebody, hey, don't do, the, don't do it, don't do that, because you're going to get uh, something in return. It's going to be bad for you. So warning también puede ser como esa acción de personal that we use in Spanish. All right. Uh, guys, antes de movernos, solamente pronuncien conmigo, please. Help, uh, repeat with me. Breathe. 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 Esta sería con la E, right? Si le quitamos la E, if we eliminate E, la pronunciamos como breath. So tiene dos pronunciaciones. Breathe. Breath. Breathe es el verbo respirar. Breath. Es el aliento o la respiración, right? Uh, repeat with me. Search. Search. Mm -hmm. Grow. Grow. Very nice. Doubt. Doubt. Mm -hmm. No pronunciamos la B. Very good. Alive. Alive. Nice. Show up. Okay, and warning. Warning. Okay, there we go. Vamos a utilizar, de hecho, vamos a verlo. Vamos a usar un poquito de este vocabulario. We have some exercises. And uh, van a escuchar estas palabras. So for you to get, uh, to get them um, and to add it to your vocabulary, right? 
So, um, ahora sí, guys, let's move back. Uh, let's go and go over this little exercise here. Um, so, tenemos match the two halves. Um, we have two different scenarios. Uh, we have some expressions on the left, pero nos hace falta the second part that is on the right. So, I really need your help to match the parts that are missing. For example, number one says, if I am late for class, my teacher gets angry. I get angry, but that is a possibility, right? <laughs> that is an example here. So if I'm late uh, for oh, uh, if I'm late for work, my boss gets angry. I think that happens, or my supervisor gets angry or gets annoyed. What about the rest of them, guys? When he states up late. Guys, what the meaning of stay up late? Se recuerdan? Do you remember this word, this expression, the full expression? Stay up late? Tarde, teacher. Mm, yes, pero hay una palabra en español que usamos. There is a word we use in Spanish. Stay up late. Las tres unidas. Stay up late. ¿Alguien recuerda? No. Okay, so in Spanish, we use the word desvelarse, right? So in English, we say stay up late. Las tres palabras. Um, so when he stays up late, cuando él se desvela, cuando él se queda hasta muy tarde, when he stays up late, how can we match the other part? Where is the other part of the sentence? Then we have people get hungry. Letter F, is, I think. Oh, okay. So number two, letter F. Let me just go and match it. If he stays up very late, he is very tired the next morning. Makes sense. Definitely makes sense. Uh, what about the rest of them? Um, guys, uh, les voy a activar la opción here para que nos ayuden and you can also participate. Eh, okay, está habilitada la anotación. So, in your computer, in your cell phone, pueden ayudarme a hacer una rayita. So, you can make a line para unir la otra parte, right? Si están en la computadora, en el menú se van arriba de mi pantalla. En una esquinita aparece un menú. Van a seleccionar donde dice annotate. O si es en español, dice anotar o note. Le dan clic. Y les aparece un lápiz, les aparece texto, y hay uno que dice dibujar, y ahí están unas líneas. So you can select that. Ah, oh, very nice, you got it. <laughs> ok, si están en el teléfono, eh, on the left, en la parte de la izquierda, on the bottom left, aparece un lapicito, click on that one, y podemos hacer la rayita también. So you can also... Do that, solo que en el teléfono uh, requiere más habilidad, right? <laughs> Porque se mueve la pantalla, but you can help us, guys. Um, so, ayúdenos, please, help us. Try to match the two parts. Uh, try to mar match the two halves. Hi, very nice. You got it, guys. You're super pro. Uh, wait, Julio, I'm going to erase the previous ones because uh, I believe um, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna erase them so you can start over. There you go. <laughs> yeah, el teléfono es un poquito más. It's kind of hard, Thank but you, you can teacher. do it. Thanks. No problem. <laughs> but you can do it. He always smiles. I watch a funny movie. Mm, but look, he always smiles. Estamos hablando de él. Um, it says, I watch a funny movie. Mm, pero ¿cuál es la relación entre él y yo? So, mm, maybe not, right? Encontremos algo más que, uh, que una, right? Something that makes more sense. Take a look here. When I cross the street, I always look left and right. Oh, okay. Yeah, because I'm crossing. If you study hard, you get good grades in school. Okay. I can do my homework if I don't have my glasses. Oh, okay. Okay. You guys, faltan bastantes. Help us. He 
He always smiles. Oh, why did you erase them? Okay, <laughs> that's all right. When she watches a movie, she likes to eat popcorn. Okay. He always smiles when he's happy. Ah, okay, okay. Now they get together. People get hungry if they don't eat. Ah, very nice. Okay. People date. People get hungry if they don't eat. Okay. It tastes sweet if you add some sugar. Okay. We have a lot, guys, so help us with the rest. Let me take a look. Um, if I miss the bus, I take a taxi to work. Okay. When you make a lot of noise, the librarian gets angry. Okay. He tastes sweet if you add some sugar. Okay. You should eat less if you want to lose weight. All right. I always take an umbrella when it rains. Mm-hmm. When I'm sad, I watch a funny movie. Okay. When he cleans the house, he listens to music. Very nice. Okay. Makes a lot of sense. So, guys, uh, what about in your case? So, como, um, how would you, como modificarían, how would you modify uh, these sentences? For example, look at this. Uh, when I'm sad, el ejemplo dice, I watch a funny movie. Guys, what about you? ¿Qué hacen ustedes cuando están tristes? What do you do? ¿Cómo completarían esta oración, guys? How would you complete it? When I am sad, I take my guitar and practice. Oh, okay, very nice. So when I'm sad, I take my guitar and practice. Oh, interesting, okay. Guys, what about the rest of you? When I say, I go to drink coffee. Really? Do you feel yes. better? Yes. Okay, interesting. <laughs> okay, guys, what about the rest? What do you do when you are sad, guys? ¿Qué hacen? What do you do? When you are sad,
Nobody else. <laughs> okay, so you listen to music, you play the guitar. All right. What about this one, guys? Um, it says here. Um, let me see the last one. When he cleans the house, he listens to music. Guys, ustedes hacen algo? Do you do anything when you clean your house? Hi, Damaris. Okay, okay, okay. Yes, me imagine. I thought so. No problem, miss. Or you don't clean your house. Hacen algo, guys, cuando limpia su casa? Do you do anything? When I wash the t-shirt, when I wash the t-shirt, I look some series on Netflix or, or anything. Oh, okay. Okay, so you watch, okay, for cleaning the house. <laughs> I play music like super, super loud here. So if you take a look, estamos intentando conectar dos ideas, right? Two sentences. ¿Cómo sabemos que tiene lógica what we are having? Oh, because eh, parecen oraciones completas. And if you take a look, tenemos algo bien importante que hace una gran diferencia at the moment of connecting ideas. Esas son estas palabras that are when. En, por acá lo tenemos. Algunos al inicio son más bien if. Right? So when and if eh, va a ser su mejor amigo cuando intentemos conectar ideas. Connect sentences um, or full ideas here. So. ¿Cuándo vamos a utilizarlas? Well, eh, vamos a revisar un tema, guys, que se llama condicionales. No es nada complicado. It isn't like that hard. But of course, eh, tiene algún patrón que vamos a seguir, right? But I'm sure you're going to be fine. So, eh, vamos rapidito, guys, to your material. Vamos a la página 44. So, we're going to eh, check. I'm sorry, that's 45. So page number 45, we have joining classes with when and if. So vamos a trabajar un poquito with these expressions. All right. Antes de iniciar, guys, ¿qué significaba show up? Como que alguien apareció, alguien llegó. Mm -hmm. Okay. Alguien llegó, alguien se presentó. Exactly. So, um, look at this one. Here, tenemos un escenario que es like when an employee doesn't show up, right? Eh, so, un employee no llega, doesn't go to the company, doesn't show up to the company. And uh, we have like some scenarios here. Juanjo, ayúdame a leer la parte de Brad, please. And hi, Ezekiel. Eh, Julio, ayúdenme a leer la parte de Annie, please. Help me read Annie's. Okay, comienzo. Soy Brad. Mm -hmm. Yes, please. Okay. Hi, Annie. How is it going? Le puede cambiar okay. nombre. <laughs> You're fine. Don't care. I'm fine. Okay. okay. That's all right. Hello, Brad. I am fine. And you? I'm okay. Thanks. Look, I want to ask you, what does your boss do when a worker doesn't come to work? Well, if someone don't, don't come, my boss call him or, or her. And when the person returns, he or she received a notified or warning. Why Brown? Well, because I didn't show up to work today. I understand. If you see your boss tomorrow, explain him the situation. Yeah, I think I will do that. Thanks, Annie. But you saw in mute. Okay. <laughs> Very nice, exactly. So look at this. Um, so uh, they are asking, right? What can we do when a person doesn't show up? Right? Um, 
if someone doesn't come eh, or if a person doesn't get to work, ¿cuál es el proceso? What is something that we should be doing? So, uh, tenemos esta palabra show up that I mentioned, vamos a estar utilizando a lot. Pero también tenemos cómo conectar la parte de if y la parte de when. No es nada complicado, guys. If you take a look, para utilizar if or when, utilizamos dos oraciones. So, uh, we have if someone doesn't come, my boss call him or call her. Now, estamos hablando de causa eh, efecto, right? Or causa resultado. So when a person returns, he or she receives a notification or warning. Y hablamos de cosas que son reales. So algo que se espera que va a suceder. Um, a esto se le llama condicionales eh, porque tenemos if, tenemos una condición, right? And uh, tenemos el resultado too. So in English, hay cuatro tipos de condicionales. Eh, este es el condicional cero. This is zero conditional. Para darles una idea en términos de gramática, but no vamos a meternos mucho like in or the name for everything. Vamos a empezar a utilizarlo. So, ¿cómo lo utilizamos? Easy, guys. El, el if o el when puede ir al inicio o puede ir al final. So, siempre estamos hablando de cosas que son reales. For example, eh, when I make a mistake, no hay make a mistake. Guys, ¿qué hacen cuando cometen un error en el trabajo? Un error serio. ¿O cuál puede ser la consecuencia? What can be the, 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 the result? I talk with my boss. Does your boss get angry? Mm, but I think so is logic. Okay, so when I make a mistake, I talk to my boss immediately. Okay, okay, so I talk to my boss immediately. Immediately. All right, I talk to my boss immediately. Um, siento que me hace falta una letra. Wait a second. Immediately. For some reason, I, yeah, okay, that was something, sorry. All right, so I talked to my boss uh, immediately. All right, so, but take a look at this one. Um, this is like a very good example that uh, podemos cambiar el orden y no cambiamos el significado. So, for example, uh, I am going to have this part first. I talked to my boss immediately. And very interesting, cuando utilizamos when, cuando decimos, ah, when I make a mistake, I talk to my boss immediately. Si se fijaron, cuando inicio con when o con if, voy a utilizar una coma, cuando estamos escribiendo, right? Pero cuando hablamos, obviamente solo es la pausa. Cuando estamos escribiendo to y cambiamos el orden, no vamos a necesitar la coma, solo el when va al final, en medio, y eso es todo. So, cambiamos el orden de las oraciones, pero el significado sigue siendo el mismo. Look at it. When I make a mistake, I talk to my boss immediately. I talk to my boss immediately when I make a mistake. No cambio el significado, solo cambio el orden, and we are super good. Um, what is the difference con if? De hecho, if es lo mismo. Si no quiero utilizar when, puedo utilizar if. If I make a mistake, I talk to my boss immediately. Y puedo utilizar también el if. Y sigue siendo lo mismo. I talk to my boss immediately if I make a mistake. Now, um, el condicion este tipo de condicional, ambas eh, oraciones deben de estar en presente simple. Right? Eh, present and present. Si tengo tercera persona, tengo que hacer el cambio a tercera persona. Uh, for example, I have if my sister makes a mistake, la idea es la misma, solo estoy cambiando, she, y como es simple present, debo de agregarle también el indicativo de tercera persona. Este es el cambio más grande que hacemos here. No vamos a utilizar pasados, no utilizamos futuros, no utilizamos presente perfecto, porque cambia totalmente la idea que quiero expresar. Voy a utilizar esto cuando yo quiera decir causa-efecto. Right? 
o, o lo voy a utilizar cuando estamos hablando de cosas reales, facts, real things, algo que siempre va a suceder. Preguntas, guys, questions, doubts. So if not, vamos a trabajarlos and then las preguntas van a ir surgiendo. So take a look at the part below. Uh, exercise number three says figure it out and scramble the statements below. Y tenemos tres oraciones. We have three sentences here. They are scramble. So vamos a desenrollarlas. We're going to unscramble them. And vamos a crear oraciones. We're going to make some sentences, all right? Guys, uh, I'll give you cinco minutitos. I think that is enough. I'll give you five minutes para intentar ordenarlos. Again, remember, when and if pueden estar al inicio o pueden estar en medio. No hay problema. That is totally fine. So let's do it. Five minutes, guys. Doubts? Do you have any doubt? Any question? Are you all right?
Teacher, una consulta. Solo debemos ocupar, solo debemos ocupar las palabras que están ahí o si hacen falta podemos incluirlas. Uh, actually, no, you're not supposed to add more words. Give me a second. No, you're not supposed to include more words. Eh, supposedly, eh, ahí están todas las que necesita. You have all the words that, that are needed. Le hicieron falta. Yo es que estaba, buscando, estaba buscando como la, la condicional con la segunda, pero es, um, una, es una pregunta. Let me take a look. No, you are right. So we are missing the word. Mm -hmm. Yes, you are right about it. So we're gonna include, yeah, you can include if or you can include when. Any of those is fine. Thank you, you're right. So Thank you. I was I was reading by default uh, and I didn't see the, the missing word. Yes, 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 yes. Do you have the sentences, guys? Do you need more time? Are you ready? Yes, I'm listening. Ready? Almost ready? Not ready yet? I can try. Okay. Okay, so guys, what do you have in the first? ¿Cómo les quedó la primera? What do you have in the first one? When, when she arrives, mm -hmm. uh, I receive it, notified the employer. Mm -hmm. Okay, so look at, all right, when she arrives, recordemos que son oraciones completas, right? So just we need to have full sentences eh, para, para que se les sea más fácil ordenarle, guys. Remember, we have subject, a verb, complement. Luego tenemos when o tenemos if. Y la segunda oración, otra vez, tenemos subject, tenemos verb y tenemos complement para que um, it comes eh, Kind of easy, for example, so iniciamos con, bueno, eso de acá podemos iniciar con when or if, o lo dejamos en medio, como ustedes prefieran, whatever uh, sounds okay for you. So, let me write it. Puede estar al inicio o puede estar en medio. So, 
but necesitamos las oraciones completas. We need the full sentences. So Julio ya nos dio el, el start, right? Um, guys, uh, what do you have in the first? Teacher. Yes. A mí me quedo así. Yeah, let she, me say it. She arrives the employee mm -hmm. when she receives a notification. Okay. Okay, vamos a ver. Let me write it y la revisamos juntos, no problem. So, can you say that again? She. You said she arrives. She arrives the employee. Okay. When mm -hmm. she receives or sites. Receives. Receives is okay. Receive. Mm -hmm. uh, notification, teacher, notification is correct. Notification, that is correct. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Um, okay, let's take a look here. Um, according to the sentence, eh, solamente tenemos un she. So, alguno de los dos tenemos que quitárselo, right? And si yo digo, el empleado llega. So, acá, in the first one, tengo dos sujetos. Tengo she y tengo um, employee. So, guys, ayúdenme a combinar. Podemos eh, modificar una de ellas and we have the full sentence. She receives notification when the employees arrive. Okay, okay. So she receives a notification when the employee arrives. Okay, so el when tendría que estar en otro lado. It looks like. Receives. Guys, tienen algo más? Do you have something different? Ya tenemos el when en medio. Remember, when puede estar al inicio, puede estar al final. ¿Cómo podríamos cambiar esto? Ayúdenme a modificar esta de acá. It's okay. Solo vamos a hacer un pequeño cambio. Teacher, ¿de employee es empleado o empleo? Creo que mm, eh, employee sería la persona. Cuando veo una palabra con i, -I se refiere a, a una persona. Eso es el empleado. Creo que usted ha visto la palabra employee. So, employee es como el empleo o emplear. Yes. Mm -hmm. Employee es la persona. Podría ser eh, she arrived. Mm -hmm. When la, ¿no? the employee receives a notification. Makes sense. So, she arrives when the employee receives a notification. Okay. Uy, no, wait. She arrives when... The employee receives a notification. Okay. La oración ahora está bien. Tenemos sujeto verbo, buen sujeto verbo. Guys, y el significado, what about the, the, the meaning here? So, ella llega cuando el empleado recibe una notificación. O ella recibe una notificación cuando el empleado llega. ¿Cuál she, tendría más sentido? She, she re, re, receives a notification receives? when the employees arrives. Okay. So she receives, let me write it here. She receives a notification when the employee Arrives. Ah, ok. Como cuando marca, right? Now, uh, tenemos acá, there are two ways. Again, puedo decir, when the employee arrives, she receives a notification, o yo perfectamente traigo todo esto para la inicio. She receives, receives a notification when the employee arrives. Y ahora sí, it makes sense. La tienen así, más o menos, cerca, guys, close. Hopefully so, so. <laughs> okay, vamos con la segunda. Veamos cómo nos queda. Take a look at the second one. Um, I think it's kind of complicated porque es una pregunta. So, what do you have in number two? What do you both does if a worker doesn't go to work? Okay, so what do your boss does does if a worker if a worker doesn't uh -huh. 
go to work. Okay. Okay, guys, la tienen así. Do you have a like this? ¿Qué tienen diferente? ¿Qué le cambiamos? ¿Qué le movemos? ¿Qué le agregamos? What does your boss do? Ah, ok. Porque necesitamos auxiliares primero. What does your boss do if a worker doesn't go to work? Y ahora está bien. Is it ok? ¿La tienen así? Do you have it like this? ¿Tienen algo diferente, guys? This is perfect. This is really, really good. Pero, again, podemos cambiar el orden, podemos invertirlo y poner todo lo que está después de if al inicio. If a worker doesn't go to work, coma, what does your boss do? Y tiene el mismo significado. Very good. Really nice. Thank you. Guys, vamos con la tercera. Let's go with number three. What do you have in number three? Creo que está más fácil. It's shorter. I think the two ways, maybe the mm -hmm. first, I call my boss if I don't show up to work. I call and... my boss if I don't show up to work. Okay. The other way, if I don't show up to work, mm -hmm. I call my boss. Okay. Guys, la tienen así, la tienen similar a la que menciona Juanjo. Tienen algo diferente? Do you have something different? Okay, so I believe Hector emojis means like this. <laughs> okay. Yes, that is okay. I call my boss if I don't show up to work. Remember, show up is ir, aparecerse, llegar, asistir, hacer acto de presencia, right? That is the one. Okay, guys. So, um, ¿cuál es lo complicado de condicionarlos? Ordenar la idea. I have to say that's pretty much it. But I'm sure that you're going to be fine with this. Okay, guys. Le tengo un poquito de listening exercise here. Um, give me a second. Give me just a moment here. And... Uh, wait a second. Okay. okay, guys, so we're going to work. Vamos a trabajar un poquito en listening. Veamos, veamos cómo nos va with this exercise. Um, this is a listening exercise taken from a very famous uh, magazine and a very famous TV program. So, again, guys, por favor, no le pongan subtítulos. Don't play any subtitles. Um, solamente escúchenlo, vayan escuchando el advertisement, listen to it y tomen nota como si fuera, you know, un dictado as if it were a dictation um, algunas de las palabras que están acá son las que vimos al inicio de la clase some of them are the ones we checked at the very beginning of classes uh, so Van a ver esta, alguna de esas expresiones, like breathe, search, grow, doubt, alive, a warning at thing. So, so, guys, I'll give you five minutes para que la pueden escribir, so. Let me, allow me a second. Give me one second. I'm gonna share it in the group too. So you can take a look at it in case this is not working. Okay, there you go. So um, it is called uh, Live uh, Curious, right? I'm gonna give you five minutes, guys. So intenting.
And, uh, intenten no ponerle subtitles. Eh, intente solamente por oído irse, right? Intent and get the whole idea. I'll give you five minutes. Vayan escribiéndolo, vayan tomando nota. And para que trabajemos nuestro oído, like little by little.
Okay, so I'm almost done. Um, okay, guys, ¿cuántas partes tienen so far? How many sentences? Ah, okay, so Hector finished. Guys, ¿los demás cómo van? ¿Les falta mucho? Are you stuck? ¿Se han quedado trabados? Are you stuck somewhere with any word? Ya le pusieron subtítulos, se dieron por vencido. <laughs> How are you doing there? Hector le puso subtítulos. Did you play subtitles? No. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Very nice. Okay. Guys, no se den por vencidos tan fáciles. You can do it. Solo, Creo que solo una niña solo, Yes? Sinceramente, solo la primera palabra, teacher, esa sí no la entendí cuando empezaba. Ah, okay. But you got it. Ya lo tiene. Sí, teacher. Nice. Creo que la más difícil de entenderle fue una niña, right? There was a girl. Por ahí había una, una niña, like, uh, like a five-year-old girl. Una niña que habla, creo que es like the hardest. Y lo demás, guys, acá están las palabras. You're going to listen exactly to these words. Breathe. I'm uh, sorry, breath. Search. Grow doubt alive so you can get an idea what they are saying all right guys eh, le, i'm gonna give you one more minute Le voy a dar un minutito más para que lo terminen and you know puedan double check it y luego lo revisamos
Okay, guys, so let's take a look at the um, at what you have, right? Veamos sus notas and let's compare them super quick here. So, um, como inicia, guys? What is the first part? ¿Cuál es la primera parte from this short listening? If you want, you read. Uh -huh. De hecho, eh, no utilizan esta palabra, sino que utilizan esta otra que es breathe, right? So, um, uh -huh. okay. Tiene lo mismo que Dinora. Do you have the same? Tienen algo diferente? Do you have something different, guys? If you are, you breathe. Exactly. If you are, you breathe. Uh -huh. So, y si le ponen atención, todo es como una cadenita. Si tienen la anterior, ya tienen la siguiente. If you breathe, what is the next? You talk. You talk. Very good. If you talk. You ask. You ask. Very nice. Guys, next one. If you ask. Ah, Georgina, help us. You think, exactly. So if you ask, you think. If you think, what is next? You search. Yes, you search. Esta palabra que está acá, la segunda. If you ask, you search. Mm, next one says, if you search, experience you experience if you experience eso está un poco difícil pero entiendo que es you learn you learn exactly aprendes if you learn you will you grow. if you learn you grow mm -hmm. if you learn you grow if you grow, you wish. You, you wish. wish. Mm -hmm. Very nice. If you wish, you find. You find, exactly. If you find, you doubt. You doubt. doubt. And you have this word, you doubt. If you doubt, you question. You question. Mm -hmm. If you question, you understand. You understand. If and if you understand, you know. You know. And if you know, you want. Aha, uh -huh. pero falta más. You want. You want to know more. You want to know more. Exactly. And the last one. If you want to know more, I live. Casi, casi, casi. If you want to know more. You are a liar. You are. Y tienen esta palabra de acá. You are alive. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Alive. Yes. And if you want to know more, so you are alive. And that's it. You know, guys, sir, si le ponen atención al vocabulario, es bastante eh, diario palabras que usamos. Pero no es lo mismo, right? Cuando ya están en contexto mixed up y cuando ya escuchamos a personas diferentes. But very nice, Joe. You definitely got it. So, um, el mensaje está bien bonito. The message is really nice, right? Because at the end it's like, okay, so si todo esto pasa, if you want to find, if you want to search, if you doubt, it's okay because you are alive. So it's part of the things that we do like every single day. So um, take a look at the following exercise in your material. And um, let's go down a little bit. And just let's take a look at the um, explanation here. So it says, how to use if and when to join clauses. So, es una de las mejores, um, you know, uh, words we can use para unir ideas 
Eh, remember, no, no es que vamos simplemente a decir oraciones cortadas, sino que ya estamos intentando eh, utilizar conectores. So, when and if, they have similar meanings. En realidad el significado es bastante similar, no cambia en mayor sentido. We use when for usual situations, y for unusual situations, pero honestamente es casi lo mismo. Both clauses have to be in simple present, es lo que les mencionaba, que no usamos pasados, pero sí tenemos que utilizar oraciones completas. Y use a comma, eh, when, if, or when, comma, the beginning. Cuando estamos escribiendo si when or if van al inicio, como acá, utilizamos una comita, right? Pero si van en medio, la coma no es necesaria porque hace la función de conexión. Take a look at the examples. What do you do when you forget your tools at work? What do you do if you miss the company transportation? En realidad es bastante sim eh, similar, right? Um, so, esos son parte de los escenarios que tenemos con if, con when. Dudas, guys? Questions? No doubts, no questions. So, vamos a trabajarlo un poquito. We're going to work it out a little bit. Um, and let's talk about some general scenarios. So, hablemos de un escenario bien común, guys. Uh, that is, llegar tarde al trabajo. So, if I get to work late. Okay, guys, si llegan a su empleo tarde, ¿qué sucedería? What is the result? Hector? My boss asked me about. Okay, so my boss asked for an explanation, let's say, right? So my boss asked for an explanation. Pero como es simple person, voy a respetar las reglas de tercera persona. Es decir, al verbo yo le debo de agregar la S here. Porque es tercera persona. Ok. Vamos a hacer bastante un ejercicio similar a lo que acabamos de escuchar. Vamos a tomar la segunda oración, right? Y vamos a hacer una cadenita. So, if I get to work late, my boss asks for an explanation. If my boss asks for an explanation, ¿qué hacen ustedes, guys? What do you do? I think in a major, I think in a better explanation. Okay, so if your boss asks for an explanation, uh, se inventa una? Do you make up one? <laughs> I think the better explanation. Okay, but uh, you think example, or se la inventa? O le dice la verdad, you tell the truth. I, I... La verdad. You, really? Yes. Okay, so I tell him or her, no sé si es hombre o mujer. Okay, yeah. the truth. All right. Wow, interesting. Wow, guys, me, me, me han dejado impactada aquí. Because <laughs> you tell the truth. Okay, como vamos a tomarles la parte anterior. If I tell the truth, guys, ¿qué sucede cuando ustedes cuentan la verdad? What happens? What is the result? Es que Héctor es demasiado honesto, you know? <laughs> so he is too honest here. I feel great, teacher. You feel great? Yes. Are you serious? Yes. Okay, if I if I tell okay, okay, that's all right. Because I don't I don't like to uh what do you say mentir? 
Lai, aha, so you don't lie. lie. Okay, so but feeling great is like not a feeling I was thinking about. <laughs> okay, so if I tell the truth, I feel great. No, pero digamos que no somos tan honestos como Hector, and <laughs> no vamos a decir la verdad. Okay, so we're gonna change this one. Is my boss asked for an explanation? I make up something. I make up something quickly. Okay, so what is the meaning of make up, guys? Vamos a usar la expresión make up para decir inventar. So make up es inventar cuando creamos, invent. O cuando pensamos en una historia, especialmente en historias, en mentiras y cosas así, es invent, right? So, I make up something quickly, or in other words, estoy diciendo, I lie. <laughs> If my boss asks for an explanation, I lie. I make up a lie. All right. Guys, okay, now, vamos a hacer lo siguiente. Vamos a tomar esta idea. We're going to have this idea. Y quiero que ustedes la vayan completando, right, con lo que se les vaya ocurriendo. So, if I lie, si yo miento, bastante similar a lo que acabamos de escuchar. So, if I lie, si mienten, ¿cuál va a ser el resultado? What is going to be the result? Okay, so, if I lie, for example, in my case, if I lie, se me va a olvidar lo que dije. So, I forget. Um, I have to be careful because I forget, I forget what I say. <laughs> okay, no sé si les ha pasado, guys, pero cuando tienen que inventar algo, se les olvida rápido. So if I lie, I have to be careful because I forget what I say. So, ¿qué vamos a hacer? Vamos a tomar la última idea, la última oración para crear una cadenita. All right. Guys, eh, we have five minutes. Tenemos cinco minutitos. Creen su cadenita utilizando la última idea que se les ocurrió. So, because I forget what I say. If I forget what I say, I can be caught in a lie. So, puedo ser descubierto, right? I can be caught in a lie. Oh, ¿qué sucedería si son descubiertos? So, let's make a lot, let's make a, um, like a chain. Hagamos una cadena de ideas, guys. Tenemos cinco minutos. Usen la segunda idea que tienen por ahí. Estos son mis ejemplos y los pueden utilizar, pueden partir de acá o partimos desde I like, whatever you prefer. Cinco minutos, guys.
let me know if you have questions, guys, or if you are struggling, please. One more minute, guys.
all ready, guys. Do you have your sentences ready? Were you able to complete them? Yes, teacher. Hi, Noe. Hi, Blanca. Great to see you guys. Georgina, great to see you there. Okie dokie. Okay, guys. So, what sentences were you able to come up with? Uh, ¿En qué terminaron sus oraciones, guys? Where did you finish it up? Uh, Julia, do you have some sentences for us? Hector, Lady, Dinora, Juanjo, what do you have? Me, teacher. Yes, please. Okay. If I get up late in the morning, I arrive late to my work. If I arrive late to my work, my boss tell of me. If my boss tell of me, I feel sad all day. If I uh, feel sad all day, my friends are sad too. Mm -hmm. If my friends are sad too, we don't eat lunch. <laughs> if we don't eat lunch, I am starving. Okay. That's it. Oh, that's it. <laughs> that is really fun. <laughs> That is really funny, uh, like the part of, if we are sad, we don't eat lunch, like seriously? <laughs> okay, that's really nice. Guys, anybody else? Alguien tiene las oraciones? Las pudieron hacer? Se quedaron trabados? Fue difícil? Tell us, guys. If I get too or late, my boss asks me if for an explanation. If my boss for an explanation, I am nervous. If I am nervous, my face put red. If my face put red, my voice could. If my voice could, I can tell him nothing. Okay, so if your voice, eh, me imagino que se refiere como que la, a la voz se le quiebra, right? Yes. Okay, so podemos utilizar la expresión break. So if my voice breaks, pero no lo haré comprender la última parte. If my, bro, my voice breaks, I can tell him nothing. Mm -hmm. If my voice breaks, como no puedo decir nada, no puedo compartir nada. Correcto. Okay, 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 yeah, the sentences are very nice, sounds good. Actually, yeah, solamente en vez de cut, utilizaría la, la expresión break, my voice breaks, mm -hmm. but that sounds good. Nice, nice. Okay, um, next, uh, alguien más, anybody else? All right, okay, but that is very nice job with those sentences. Now, vamos a intentar practicarles un poquito sin escribirlas también, que es el objetivo final, right? So, uh, tengo un par de situaciones acá. I have a couple of situations que vamos a practicar. And it says here, what is the result, right? So, ¿cuál es el resultado si sucede algo como esto? Look at it. For example, number one says, what happens if a person doesn't sleep for 24 hours? Guys, ¿qué sucedería si alguien no duerme por 24 horas? So what happens if a person doesn't sleep for 24 hours? 
Um, so next one we have, what is the result when you eat something very cold, right? Uh, number three, if you put a spicy pepper in your mouth, what happens? So, ¿qué pasaría si pone como un chile muy picante, right, in your mouth? Uh, so, what is the result? What happens to grass if no rain, uh, if there is no rain for a long time? So, what are like the most common results? What happens when people don't exercise? And what happens if you leave ice cream outside on a hot day, like the picture? What do babies do when they are hungry? So what is something common babies do? What do people do when they drink too much alcohol? Y la última, what happens if a person touches a hot stove? So a hot stove is como la imagen que está acá, right? Eh, so son los quemadores cuando están muy calientes. So guys, um, ¿qué sucede? What happens? Uh, please take a picture. Eh, tomémosle una captura, guys. Take a picture here. Intentemos hablar de los resultados. So, ¿Qué sucedería en estas situaciones? Right? You can be creative. Pueden ser creativos, guys. Give some ideas. And pueden compartir la imagen en su grupo para que sea un poco más fácil. Right? Uh, so, guys, please take a picture or take a screenshot. Tomemos una captura de pantalla. And uh, let's get it started here. And guys, los voy a invitar a que nos unamos a los grupos para que podamos participar, para que practiquemos con los compañeros too. Guys, me indica, eh, aparte de los compañeros de, que ya se reportaron que van a ser, que están escuchando por el trabajo, you know, alguien más eh, está, está trabajando, is anybody else working, para, you know, eh, considerar también en, que no se me queden. Um, ok, thank you, Abigail. So, para que no se me queden, you know, lost over there. Okay, give me a moment. Okay guys, so I'm going to invite you to the groups. Los voy a invitar a que nos unamos. Eh, guys, tenemos like 5 o 10 minutos para que podamos dar tantas ideas como podamos, as many ideas as you can, from this uh, picture, right? So let me see si les puedo compartir. Guys, no les escribamos. Don't write them anymore. Solamente intenten compartirlas, please. Compartan sus ideas y compartan los resultados. Try to share results sin escribirlo, without writing it down, please. Go ahead, guys.
Thank you so much for coming and for returning, guys. Give me just a second. Okay, I think it's about time. All right, guys, solamente a eh, breve reminder. Eh, recordemos que el día lunes tenemos la finalización de módulo. If God willing, right, si nos es permitido. Pero please, guys, intentemos terminar la sesión, la plataforma especialmente eh, antes, right? No esperemos hasta el lunes porque se les va a acumular todo. So, gracias a quienes ya lo completaron. A los que no, porfa, guys, eh, dedicámosle un par de minutitos. No les va a tomar mucho tiempo. And, uh, eh, la idea es que tampoco se les vaya acumulando y tengan que en vez de cinco minutos, pues tengan que estar una hora con eso, right? Um, one second. It's just to give you some general thingy here. Me falta Blanca, me falta Georgina. Creería que me falta Noé también. Eh, los demás guys, uh, casi la mayoría ya terminó. Almost everybody is done. So thank you so much for that. Creo que me falta Julio por ahí, Paolo también. Hola Mauricio. Teacher, yo tengo el 73%, pero yo contesto las preguntas y ya no las puedo corregir. Que no sé si es problema del sistema o no sé. Mm, a veces se queda trabado. Lo más recomendable es que salga, pero dele logout. No solo lo cierre, ¿verdad? Sino que en el menú de arriba. Cuando usted está en la plataforma, dele logout completamente, entra otra vez con su correo y su contraseña. Y a veces si sí, la plataforma pues se queda como trabada y eso funciona y, y ya podríamos intentarlo. So we can do that. Porque eh, entiendo que tengo que llegar al 80%. Necesitamos el 80%, correcto. So we need 80%. Eh, me le falta por ahí el examen final, creo, y es el que más le suma. Entonces, con un par de ejercicios, sounds good. Solamente al terminar el ejercicio, recuerde darle submit, porque puede ser también que no le esté tomando el submit. Que ya completó el ejercicio, pero por alguna razón, eh, al momento de entregarla, no se le vaya. Eh, y solamente o actualízalo, o si le sigue dando el mismo problema, ciérralo, dele logout, login, y ya estuvo. Okay. Y no tendría que funcionar. Uh -huh. All right. Eh, los demás, gracias a, a todos, right? Y Julio, si te, sigue teniendo problemas con eso, me cuenta el día de mañana para ver de qué manera los compañeros de soporte nos ayudan también, porque puede ser como algún glitch en la plataforma, right? Algo que necesite eh, revisión más detallada. Eh, guys, antes de irse, solamente déjenme confirmar asistencia here. Edgar Andrea, Abigail, Blanca. Héctor, si sí está. Mr. Sánchez también. Gracias, Blanca. Mr. Narváez. Don't see him. Haven't heard him. Ezequiel, sí. Juan is here. Julio César también. Gracias, Ezequiel. Eh, Kenia, le subí por ahí. No veo a Paolo. Ladies there. Mauricio, que siga mejor. I hope you feel better. Que no veo, no hay tampoco. Salvo a ver si está acá. Michelle, no. Dinora and the Maris. Okie dokie. Ok. Ok, guys, so thank you so much. Eh, ya nos faltan solamente un par de sesiones, guys. Tengamos paciencia, dos sesiones más en We Are Done. Solo los esperamos el día de mañana, right? And guys, que descansen, sleep well, and I'll be seeing you tomorrow. Have a good night, everybody. See you tomorrow. Good night. Have a good night. Good night, teacher. See you, see you guys. See you tomorrow.